Hello again, nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. I've had a few new subscribers, which is smashing. It's really fun. So I hope you don't mind if you usually watch me each week, but I just wanted to round up and uh, say a little bit about, uh, you know, if you're new. So uh, my name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my four chickens. They're in lockdown at the moment, as are all chickens in the UK. And one is molting. I mean, you know, at the end of December, she's molting, but every day I go down there and all these new feathers are starting to grow. So I might take, uh, if I can, I'll take a little film and I'll show you that. Because it's rather intriguing to see them lose all their feathers, not all their feathers, but quite a few of their feathers, and then see the, you know, the shaft and that growing and then the feather gradually emerging. It's, it's, well, it's like a miracle, really. And when they lose their feathers a bit, they go a little bit, they lose their confidence, a bit like us, if we're not well. We can lose our confidence, can't we? <laughs> and that's how they are. But, you know, she's perking up a bit today. And they're being so good because, I mean, they're being shut in, but they're not pecking about. Anyway, fuja doos if you're from Scotland. Fuja doos Yeah, so that's me. I'm Penny. Um... I did do a DNA test along the way and I have found out that I'm quite a bit Scottish which is where Fuja Doos comes in and uh, Peke Noir. Yeah, so that doesn't tell you much really, does it? I was a counsellor for the NHS for a good number of years and I've decided to do TA which is transactional analysis. It's something you can teach, um, you know, as I'm doing in small bites and uh, it all... It all goes together like a jigsaw puzzle. So if you don't want to watch that, then just fast forward. But if you do, yeah, it's very helpful. So we've got a long way to go. We're just starting, really. But, uh, yeah, little and often, and, um, yeah. Oh, you can tell it's going to be a waffly one, can't you? Anyway, so that's, that's that. I was thinking as well, you know, I probably would have um, carried on working. I'm 72. But I loved my job and the people who I worked for, well, it was the NHS, but, you know, my line manager said, oh, we just don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose you. Oh, but they wouldn't let you go part time. I think that happens quite a bit, quite a bit of mature people who've had a job for a long time, but finding they need to, you know, wind down a bit. Um no, it's the option's not there for part time. So I had to give up. And of course, then lockdown started. I gave up last year at the beginning of lockdown. So that all worked out quite well. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah, so that's why I decided to do a chin wag and have a chat with you. So thank you for joining me. Now, I put timestamps along the bottom. So if you just go like that, you'll see what all the portions are. If you haven't, and some people are new to YouTube uh, that are watching. And when I say down below, that means in the description box. So when you see Penelope's Chinwag and you see a little bit about, hello, my name's Penny and I live in the Southeast. And then it says, see more. If you press see more, then a big box comes up with all my timestamps, but also all the recipes that I've talked about and, uh, you know, the recipe for the leek and uh, carrot pasties because they are truly scrumptious. I'm going to make them again and not eat most of it. But the recipe's there in the description box below. So click on see more. And um, I think that's, I know every device is different, but if you wanted to, it that's where it is. So when I see when I say in the description box down below or just down below, see more and then it all comes up. Everything I've talked about that I want you, you know, that I mentioned, I put down there. So my granddaughter Lois has got one more week to go before Tom is born. And it's all been a bit nerve wracking because she contracted COVID and so did her partner. But they're on the mend. So hopefully now she can have a week of rest uh, before baby's born, but it wasn't the ideal time, it really wasn't. But, you know, so far, okay. Um, what does that mean, woman in hall? Oh yes, that's right, I've got that here. I've got a few, couple of notes, otherwise I'll go right off piste. 
Yeah. We saw Strictly last week. Wasn't it fantastic? Well, we loved it. We absolutely loved it. And we thought it was so magnanimous of John Waite to say he didn't really mind. He just enjoyed taking part. And, um, yeah, a and the right couple won, I felt. But that's just my opinion. But we loved the night. We went round Mum's and we had a little bit of tea. And we had such a good chuckle. I don't know what about. I can't remember now. But we had a good evening. And we didn't, oh, we would, didn't want to turn out in the cold, you know. We have, we haven't been out sort of after dark for so long, but uh, yeah, we're glad we did. It was, it was a super, super evening. Thought they did it really well. So one viewer has said I couldn't sleep the other night, and so you know I had a new chin wag up, so she popped it on. And she said, just listening to you talking about your crafting settled me down and I was able to sleep. And I thought that was such a lovely, such a lovely thing that crafting not only helps the person that's been crafting, but can also help you if you're just watching and seeing what's being made. So thank you for that comment. I really appreciated it. You'll never guess what. I watch Ali, Little Drops of Wonderful, and uh, she did a, a, a deal with Omelette, uh, which is chicken coop manufacturer. Well, they do all across the board, cats uh, all across the board, but, you know, she, she was worrying about her chickens because they got to be in love, and you got 10% off. She gave a, a code, which is there under Ali, Little Drops of Wonderful. And... Um, so I thought, right. So I got them some feeder, new feeders, beautiful. It's super, super quality. I got them beautiful feeders and beautiful um, water, you know, things. And and then I saw and I couldn't resist it. So I'm waiting for it to come. So it might be held up in the post. But if it comes in time, I'll take a little film of um, them on a swing. And because chickens love to be rocked. That's why I sing, every time I go down there, I sing to my girls. Five little ducks went swimming one day over the hill and far away. Well, funnily enough, I saw um, on British Sign Language, there's a lady that teaches young children to sign. And she does all the songs. <laughs> so I've been learning a little bit of signing. And um, so I don't think I'll sign to them, though. I don't think they'll get that. But I do sing to them the songs that uh, I sang to my great-granddaughter. So, yeah, Five Little Ducks, Johnny, Johnny, Yes, Papa, Eating Sugar, No, Papa, all of those. And they love it. And they also love being rocked. They go in a trance. So I've just sent off with it. It wasn't expensive, and I got my 10% off. You can use it more than once. So I got it for the feeders and then thought, oh. So I got it for the swing as well. So I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> if I can. If not, it'll be next time. Yes, yeah, so I think that's all I want to say, really. So what I do is a fascinating fact about nature because I love nature. And what I like to tell you about is where nature, yeah, joins with science and so this week it's about the cat's tongue. And last week, oh, I've got to have a slurp. I won't, I won't go off. I'll just have a slurp. Oh, that's gorgeous. Um, last week I was talking about school. And thank you for saying you like the outtakes because Pete can go off, you see. He's, uh, you know, we talked about it. How old were you? Yeah, how old were you when you, you know, knew you wanted to do cooking? 13. And then we sit down and he says, well, I might have been older. Well, when you've got a certain amount of time. <laughs> so, but then I didn't want to just scrap it. So thank you for saying that you laughed. That what that gave you a laugh. That was nice. Anyway, I can remember sitting in my schoolroom and I went, yeah, until I was 11. It was a house. It was someone's house. The front room was a schoolroom. Yeah, my schoolroom. And there was another one upstairs, another two upstairs that were obviously bedrooms at one time, and another one downstairs which had French doors onto the front garden. That was my first class. And I just remember sitting there, age five, 
and I remember my book as clear as anything with the beautiful paper. It was like glossy. And A for apple, B for C for D for dog, E for egg. I can see the egg cup. F for feather. And we went up. And so we went down. And I can remember that book as clear as day. I wish I still had it. And then when I was in the top class, I was 10. And that was the front room of some of the house. And I had a fire with a big fireplace. Uh, no, big fire guard. And then in the corner, a small pedal organ. Not like these electric organs. It was one, you know... I think they call them a harmonium or something like that. Uh, pedaling away and we'd stand up and sing to that. And then I remember Mrs. Hall, as her house, saying, Now why has a cat got a rough tongue? And uh, I can remember a lad putting his hand up. Oh, so they can drink milk. And no, and there was silence. And I thought, well, it's obvious. It's so they can clean themselves. And, uh, oh you know, shall I, shan't I? And anyone will know if they've gone to episode one, that's what I called the uh, Penelope's chinwag at the beginning, shall I, shan't I? I can remember sitting there and then I put my hand up and said so they can clean themselves. Well done, Penny. Oh, I was really, really chuffed. I got a well done. So I'm doing the cat's tongue this week and uh, how that links in with science. So I found that quite interesting. So fascinating fact is the cat's tongue. Mum, we thought we were moving on to uh, Harlow. No such luck. We still had quite a few questions to answer. Uh, people have asked me questions. So we sort of recap and then we're finally going to get to Harlow. So she does a little bit. And no film this week. Um, the chickens. No, the chickens. No film this week. Mum's going to play us out on the piano. <laughs> So a little bit different. So this is my waffle. I'm going to show you some crafting and then I'm going to do a little bit of TA just to finish off the strokes and that'll be it for this week. Episode, well I don't say the episode number because I, I've lost track. So let me put that down. I think I've said all I want to say. So finally, I finished his socks. He's pleased with them. Boy, do they go lovely with his with his um, shoes. The same colour. They look gorgeous. I'm losing the light now. What's the time? Oh, it's ten to three. I'm going to have to hurry. Who's that? I cut his hair today again. We're back to that because we're not going out at the minute because the numbers are quite high here. So, yeah, he was due to have his hair cut. So, sorry, Tracy. Um, but, um, yeah, with Lois, you see, having the COVID, we just didn't want to risk anything going out, honestly. So, these are washed. And I don't block my socks. I just wash them and then he wears them before you can say Jack Robinson. Now, I bought, as you know, I bought lovely organic Garth and Or sock. They've got it on sale at the minute. I'm quite tempted, but it does work out to about £20 for a pair of socks. But then there's nothing bad in it. It's organic wool. And I think that's really good for your feet because the soles of your feet, you know, they absorb as much and all of that. They're very tender. However, this is opal sock. And I, he put it on yesterday just to see if they fitted. He couldn't take them off. He loved them. And this is £6 for a for this and I've got a, a quite a bit over about 10 grams I've got over so it probably takes me 80 or 90 grams it was sticky yeah he had them on I've washed them <laughs> but um probably takes me 80 80 grams I would say yeah to knit a pair of socks for him so I'm pleased with those I better get on because the light's gonna go I've been addicted addicted to project bags. So I made this one. Uh, when sewing quarter closed down, I bought quite a few, you know, uh, fat quarters because they were practically giving them away. And I bought this one. I loved it because I love swallows. And I did quilting down there on the machine. 
and along there. It's the same inside, so it, it's the same all over. I did the tall top because I liked it. Box bottom, that's a nice size. I'm quite pleased with it. And then I thought, oh, I just want to try another one. This one in her pattern um, has got handles, but I didn't want handles. My MacBook does fit in it nicely. This is what I recalled on a MacBook. MacBook Air. Yeah, I think something they call it like that. So I made this one because I love this fabric from Tilda. As you know, I've shown you this. So I did tiny weeny little hexagons for... They're, they're so small. But anyway, I thought they'd go there because I did put a popper on. I didn't really want to, but I thought I'll see how it goes. And then I put beads on the... Can you see those beads? I put beads on the... Oh, on the... Is that a piece of cotton? Oh, one's come off. It's not really practical, is it? You've got to make sure there's a jolly good knot behind that. So one's come off there. Probably where you have it on your lap. It's not really practical. They'll just fall off, I'm sure. And then... Oh, I'll put this on. And this... This is an A4. This is Tootsie Bear. This is the pattern for Tootsie Bear. I've done him one arm. So when I've done him two arms, I'll show you. But that is the pattern. So that And that shows you how that fits in there. Just lovely. So yeah, so that's what I've got in there. And oh, I've got my new project in here because I've made enough. I've made enough, what, project bags. I've just washed my hair because this morning I got up and I thought, do you know what, I need to do some cleaning. I've made so many project bags, you know what it's like. So I've had a jolly good clean this morning and then I had a shower, washed my hair and came on before the light went. Oh, I'm not going off to slurp today. So I've got a new project in here, I'll show you. This will give you a clue. Um, sometimes I don't use a hoop. Sometimes I just like to sit and do embroidery. But this is a, a piece of linen, antique linen. And I think it, it's going to bend a bit much. So I'm going to use my hoop. And I'm going to do this from the stitchery. It's the Little Green Door Embroidery Kit. And my daughter gave it to me, my daughter Kim. And she said, Mum, you might like to do this. It comes beautifully wrapped. Lovely ribbon. I mean, it's really Georgette's soft, beautiful ribbon. I'll show you. And so I've got it in my project bag. So this is what I'm going to I'm not going to be making any more project bags. I'm going to be doing this. So what do you get? I'll show you the pattern. This is left blank, so you can put whatever you like. I don't know what I'm going to put yet. We'll see when I've done it. She gives you all the silks. I mean, I've got so many silks because I've been, you know, I've always done cross-stitch and embroidery. But um, it's nice to have them all there and they're lovely quality. They're not very... She says, in the stitchery, she says she usually uses a lot more faded. But um, these are quite bold. So we'll see how it comes out. Then she gives you a beautiful piece of beautiful linen for the little door. And then you applique that on. And you can see it's only small, but it's so soft and lovely linen. And that's the... She just gives you the bare outline. So Kim gave that to me. And that's my project for this week. How far I get, I'll see. But I'll show you as I go along. It's really nicely wrapped. I like it. Oops, I've done 20 minutes. Oh, that's a bit long, isn't it?
all notes, the stitchery. She gives you everything. Tells you how to do the door. Yeah. So I'll show you as we go along. I've said that, so I won't say it again. Now, I was going to show you a county cross stitch, but I am driveling on a lot. But uh, it's here, so shall I show you? It's quite big. It's done on a Aida. I like the colour. It makes all the difference. Now, how am I going to show you? That's it. A peep. I've got to peep. Yeah, so that's it, isn't it exquisite? And the colour of, of the wallpaper in my hall is grey and it just sits there beautifully. I'll show you a little bit closer. So this is all beaded. Can you see all the beads? All beaded. And the pillows all beaded. This is all beads. And then this, her, her coverlet is all beads. And here, oh, and I have to go this side. Coverlet comes down, beads, and it's a. Uh, I think it's called Mirabilia. That's the name they do. Women. I've got several more. Not several. I've got one more, and uh, I'd love to do several more, but I won't now. And this is called Sleeping Beauty. I can really recommend you doing one of their kits if you fancied it. It's quite fine. You can see, you know, you can't really see. Yeah, it's just fine linen it's done on. How nice. So I'm going to introduce the fascinating fact now, and I'll see you after that. Domestic cats are known for their grooming habits. They may devote 24% of their waking hours to grooming. This cleaning habit owes its efficiency to the cat's amazingly equipped tongue. The cat's tongue is covered with 290 papillae, tiny backward-facing spines that are about as stiff as your fingernail. Each papilla has a groove that instantly picks up saliva when the tongue is drawn into the cat's mouth. As the cat licks its fur, the papillae reach down through the hairs and release the saliva onto the skin. A cat's tongue can transfer about 48 millilitres of saliva to its skin and fur every day. This saliva contains enzymes that break down contaminants. Additionally, as the saliva evaporates, it provides almost one quarter of the cat's body cooling, essential because cats have few sweat glands. If one of the papillae hits a tangle, it swings deeper into the fur, which substantially increases the force and pulls the snag loose. The tips of the papillae may also stimulate the skin when the cat is grooming. Researchers imitated the properties of the cat's tongue when they made an experimental hairbrush. This brush combs hair with less force than a standard hairbrush and can be cleaned more easily. Plus, it unsnarls tangles. The researchers believe that the cat's tongue could inspire the development of better ways to clean hairy and shaggy surfaces. It may also be used to improve methods of applying lotions or medications onto skin that is covered with hair. My daughter Nicola, she was born with really thick ringlets and it was, well, I used to, I used to bribe my friends to uh, comb her hair and it, it would have been very, very handy to have one of those hair brushes. Anyway, pop round to mum's in the week and uh, she, oh no, I'm not going to pop round to mum's yet. I'm going to do, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to do TA and then I'm going to pop round to mum's, put it up and, and mum's going to play us out. So I'll say cheerio then. So, so what? So let me talk about the last bit of strokes. Now, 
We talk about negative strokes, don't we? But ne we talked last week about negative being quite helpful. You know, you've got a stain on your shirt. All right. Oh, thank you. You want to know. Just because it's negative, it doesn't mean it's not good in that sense. We can work with negative, but we can't work with a discount. No, because we don't know what to do with a discount. So what's a discount? I'll tell you. So let's just give an example of a negative conditional. You spelled that word wrong. That's negative because you didn't spell it right. And it's conditional because you were doing some writing. You spelled that word wrong. Okay. Now this is where the discount. See if you can hear the difference. What might they say? You can't spell. Now, if someone says to you, oh, you spelt that word wrong, it's negative. They might say it in nurturing parent even. Oh, you spelt that word wrong. Oh, have I? Oh, thanks for telling me. Oh, how do you spell it? Do you know? You can work with it, can't you? I see you can't spell. What can I do with that? Go off and swallow a dictionary. I can't do anything with that, can I? It's not true. I can spell. I've just spelled that word wrong. So can you see the difference? Discount. Let's think of another one. I feel uncomfortable when you do that. Oh, do you? They're owning. They're owning it, aren't they? I. We're going to talk a lot more about owning our feelings because uh, a lot of people don't. They say you instead of I. So I feel uncomfortable when you do that. Well, that's about me, isn't it? And you can do something about that. Can I help? Oh, whereas if I say as a discount, you make me feel uncomfortable. What can I do with that? You make me feel uncomfortable when you do that. Can you see the difference? I feel uncomfortable when you do that. That's great. That's, that's a negative because you feel uncomfortable. But you make me feel uncomfortable. Well, I might do the same thing with 10 people in front of me and only that person feel uncomfortable. The other nine are fine. Well, what can I do then? Well, I can offer to help, but probably I'll, I'll oh, that's not good. It's not about me doing something, it's about them. That's a discount. Can you see that? I hate you. Okay, it's negative. <laughs> it's unconditional. Yeah, I hate you. Well, it's still about that person talking, isn't it? But when they say you're hateful, well, I'm clearly not. When they say, I hate you, that's about them. But you're hateful. Oh, how, how do I feel then? What can I do about that? I can't do anything because it's clearly not true. I'm not hateful. That's their perception. Yeah. So that is what a discount is. And a discount really leaves us on the wrong foot. Because a straight negative gives us something that we can do. A signal we can work with. But, no, on a discount, that's most awkward. The discount itself rests on a distortion of reality. Yeah, I hate you. Well, fair enough, don't come round anymore then. You're hateful. Oh, goodness, what can I do about that? But that's not true, I'm not hateful. That's just their perception. Perception. Yeah, so we're going to obviously round all this up and talk a lot more. But I just wanted to tell you there, discounts and negative strokes. And listen out when people are talking. Or, you know, if you watch, if you watch the soaps, uh, you can be sure you're going to get a lot of discounts that you can recognise. If you don't watch the strokes, if you don't watch the soaps, 
then uh, yeah, just listen out to other programs. If people might give a discount or if they give a negative conditional or unconditional, which we can work with. So that's TA for this week. And now I'm going to pop mum on. She, uh, well, I went round there last week. It's all a bit of a mixture and answering questions. And then she's going to play us out. So I'm going to say cheerio. I'll see you next week. Have a lovely holiday because uh, some people have got a nice time off work. And I know some people have just got a few days. So enjoy what holiday you have. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Nice to see you. Bye. Well, hello again. I'm here with Mum, and we're going to have a chat. Well, we'll see how it goes, Mum. But we've yes. got—I've got rather a lot of questions for you, haven't I? Yes. Good morning, all. Yes. So, shall we get started? Because we were going to go straight to Harlow, but some people have said this and that, and so I'm going to ask you some questions before we finally get to Harlow. So, what's on my list? Right. So. Well, we're going to start with your mum. When you, how old you were when your mum died, and you were seventeen and a half. Yes. Because it was nineteen forty-three, mm. and so yeah. really, mum, from my angle, I can just imagine being seventeen and a half. I mean, crumbs. You know, you couldn't. Wow. Yes. What a lot of responsibility yes, you had. And what a lot had gone on before that because we'd been to Scotland. You'd been yeah. sent out to Scotland. We'd had that and come back. Yeah. Mum was helping to office clean because that was how we got our cottage. Yeah. And then, of course, she was not well when she, we came back from Scotland and yeah. then she, she died. Yeah. And so you were 17 and a half. Yes. Yes. And, I mean, you... You know, the country had been at war since 1939. Yes. Uh, Four years. 13 you were when yes. it started. Yes. And now here you are at 17 and a half having to look after your dad because you yes. your dad didn't make a cup of tea. Well, dad was, his job was very heavy and yeah. busy and and he never often wasn't home until um, seven, half past six or seven. And, and mum... That was Mum's life, looking after the home and helping in the cottage, uh, because that went the cottage went with the, her job of cleaning the offices. So yeah. that was her life, and Dad's life was busy, busy with his job. Yeah, uh, but I want to show this photo, Mum. This is March, nineteen forty-four, twenty-first of March, nineteen forty-four, and. You told me that the dress you had on was the dress you wore oh, for the funeral. For the funeral. Yes. But also, this is the time that you got engaged. Yes. And so that's the photo, isn't it, Mum? Yes. Yeah. So yes. that's you when you got engaged. And I yes. think, considering what you've been through, Mum, mm. all those years of the war and you're yes. still in the war and you haven't got a clue when it's no. going to end, you've lost your mum. Yes. You, you look pretty, yes. pretty well. Well, I'd met Dad and yeah. he was... He was a uh, not yeah. just a, a fiance, but he yeah. helped such a lot. That's it. While Mum was ill, and he'd been a big, big help. With now this is Dad in things. 1946, Mum, because although you got married in 44, and we've talked yes. about how Dad was, you know, working yes. and not, he was called up in 1946. Yes, and so that's really, I think that's probably how Dad looked when you got engaged yes. and when you got married. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he hadn't changged much, no, had he? not at all. No, so that, that's, that's dad, yeah. Yes. And then your dad met someone, didn't yes. he? Yes, And you really liked her. Yes, he met Ada. So yes. in 1946, yes. which was just, I think he got married at the beginning of 1946. So the war finished in yes. the September, didn't it? Yes. And so then he felt free, obviously, yes. that they could get married. And dad was called up and went into the yeah. Air Force, so our life completely changed yeah. as well. Yeah. You had then a couple of 
years on your own, didn't you? Yes. Working yeah. and... Yeah. Uh, now, we got some pictures of when he came out of the Air Force and you found a place that you absolutely loved for years and years and I remember it so well. Yes. And Gurnard Pines. And Gurnard Pines in the Isle of Wight. Yes. Yes. It's a small holiday camp. But yes. It was absolutely lovely. And tell me about this photo then, Mum. Well, this was our best man, his dear friend who lived just a few doors away. Yeah. Who was also in the Air Force. Right. We all went on holiday to go in our pines together. I mean, after all these years, yes. Mum, it must have been... Yes, that was absolutely Yeah, they're wonderful. brilliant, so and it was. because they were such great buddies and were right. always together and because they lived in the same road for, and were brought up together, they, yeah. they all got together whenever they could. Ah. And it was always, once I married Dad... I was always included in whatever they were doing. So and, you were, yeah, a party to four. Yes. And I noticed you're smoking, and I know Dad had a pipe, but all yes. smoking. Yes. And he's a very bad asthmatic, oh, the man yes. on the end. Yes, and still puffed away. But still, because we didn't know yes. it was anything no. bad. No. But So there you are with real Dad's real yes. childhood chums, chums. aren't oh, they? Yes. And again? Yes, and there they were. Betting me I couldn't drink a pint of beer. Oh, right. I don't remember drinking it, but I did try. <laughs> um, and um, interesting, because I watched a television programme this week, Mum, and they said that the government said all through the war that beer must yes. never be rationed. No. The, the no. British people there must was always, always beer have their beer. somewhere or another yeah. that you could... You yeah. could so here remember. you are drinking yes. a pint of beer, and yes. here's Dad. Yes. With his pipe a in his hand and a pint of beer. beer. Lovely. So, uh, and you say yeah. you remember um, your dad oh. when you were in the yes. air raid shelter. Yes. Because you went down into yes. the, you went down in the air raid yes. shelters, hated it, didn't you? Yes. yes. What mum particularly hated was if she wanted to go to the loo. No. Yes, I just <sighs> hold myself all the time. Yeah, until we could I can out. imagine yes. that wanting to go to the loo yes. and everybody being yes. there. Yeah, and the same if ever I went to a, a air raid shelter outside, even if it was a small one. Yeah, sitting close to people. Yeah, that was I could get fidgety because I'd be wanting to. Yeah, <laughs> want to, to go out. And you remember your yeah. dad having a pint of beer and then spending yeah. a penny in the air raid shelter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, a, needs must eh? in a bucket. Yes. In a bucket. <laughs> so yeah, life wasn't like it is now. No. no. We talked no. about then you moved to Harlow. Yes. And uh, I've got a photo here, Mum. I went back there in 2013 when I uh, started writing my little yes. memoirs, and um, you, three floors. You said yes. we lived on, on the, the top, top floor. floor. Yes. And I used to sleep on the balcony, balcony. and that's what it looks yes. now. It's actually in a listed part yes. of Harlow, yes. very pretty. And um, tell me what you used to do from that balcony. Well, we had lovely, lovely neighbours who loved you. They hadn't any children, and but they often forgot their keys or couldn't find their keys, and they would say to me, oh, Eva, could you... Um, climb over and let us in and I used to climb over climb there over that, balcony, that separated Mom. the balconies yes, yes. you must have let them in I mean I don't know how yes. you did that and but there we are yes that you re no. that's a clear memory for you oh isn't yes it? more than once exactly oh, more than once you must yes. have clung on <laughs> yeah and so here's um I like this one mum here's me outside yes because it was all being oh, built around yes, us, wasn't it? Yes, so much was going on. Yeah. Life changed every week. Something different happened or yeah. you saw something different. And I love this. On. I love this, Mum. I'm standing on yes. a stool overlooking the balcony. Yes. And you told me that's where I slept. Mm. And It's you on the settee, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm, put, I'm trying to put my socks, socks on. on. I'm trying to put myself, I think, and I remember those slippers, they they were made of felt, there's a little slipper there, I don't know if you can see it mum, but they were made of felt and they had a little strap over with a button, a big black button and the hole and then I could button them up. Yeah. Oh, I remember those slippers yeah. and so I remember this day mum, oh. oh, when I helped you polish. Yeah. 
yes. knicker elastic. Yeah. We didn't. <laughs> But I helped you polish, Mum, and I broke a vase. Uh, and I, I remember hiding my face in the duster and smelling of all the, the polish. Yes. Min yes. cream, I think you used yes. then. Oh, look, there's the little slippers. Yeah. And um, and you said, don't worry, love, these things happen. But, uh, you know, yes. that was really kind of oh. you. And here's a couple of me. I think when we moved, yes. yeah, when we moved in, that's yes. me. We had some questions about, and you're going to play us out, about how you got to learn the piano. Because look at the times we're yes. talking about. How did you ever learn the piano? Yes. Well, my, the teacher at school, we, I was in the choir and um, very interested in, in all things of music, singing, and, and the music teacher... When we had our music lesson, which was usually an hour, she was always very interested. She'd come up to me and she'd say, I'd got an ear for music. And she would show me music and she would teach me about the G clef and different, um, the black note, the notes on the music, what they meant and how we would sing and of course when we were in the choir we all wow. had a, a sheet of music just for the for the, for the words just to, to sing. a mum's um, singing voice for the, you those of you that don't know it's like an angel people i mean you know would love to listen to mum singing so that's obviously how you got our attention yes. as well by your beautiful yes. voice mum she said i had an ear for music yeah. and then as the years went i Knew, understood music, but I could never play by music. Ah, never needed music. I always picked up songs by ear. By ear. Yeah, and when, when I used to play in the pub, and everybody would sing. Play and, in the pub. Yes. Can't you imagine you playing no. in the pub, Mum. All the old songs. But why wouldn't you play in the pub? Because probably that was your only access well, to a that, piano. Yes. Yeah. Because. We didn't have a piano at home. No. And I did have friends who had pianos would always let me. And I had another friend whose mother, whose auntie, looked after a little, um, at the top of the house was a little branch of a Scottish church. And on a Sunday, mm. they would have hymns and songs. And afterwards, when they'd gone, she would have to go up and tidy and I would go up with her and my friend and we'd help tidy but I'd also have a little have a little practice play. on the piano as yeah, well. I remember you telling me that. Yes. Oh that must have been yes. a joy then, itching oh, to get your hands absolutely. on a piano. Yes. Of course mum's got a baby grand now because yes. the people next door to us when we were growing up in Southgate, uh, when the ladies died, she left mum a grandfather clock, which I've got, and she left mum a little bit of money and you bought your baby grand with yes. it, didn't you? Yeah. So uh, that was lovely. Yeah. And of course you bought me a piano when I was 11 yes. and I learnt to play. Um, but I learnt to play by music yes. with a very strict teacher oh, that probably yes. held me back a bit. Well, yes. you had a couple of I lessons with I had a couple of lessons with her and she used to slap my hand if I played a wrong note. Oh, no. You were in your forties yes. then, Mum, or whatever it was. <laughs> Honestly, I know. So that's how I was taught, and I would love to be taught now by yes. someone you know who's yes. old. Oh, I just yes. love music too. Yes. But Mum can sing as well. Now the other question was <laughs> about rationing, about oh, food shortages, yes. really. And one in particular was was suet rationed, and although it wasn't rationed. It, everything was short, wasn't it? Yes. There were shortages of everything. Yes. But you remember particularly suet, don't yes, you? Yes, because I used to help my mother. She, one of her... Dad used to call her brilliant dishes was a steak and kidney pudding, which had to have suet pastry. You, and then you'd put it in a big saucepan with boiling water and you'd cook it for two or three hours. But... The pastry was made with fresh suet from the animal and it was sold in very large pieces, very fatty when you held it, 
and she, my job was then she would give me an, enough suet in a lump to grate. It had to be on the smallest grating, and I'd do that for her. So she would make this suet pastry, as they called it, but it wasn't pastry that you rolled out and put in the oven. It was pastry that you used on the top. And the same thing if you made dumplings, that was the same, similar sort of mixture, because you'd put that in a stew, put those in a stew. Yeah. And that was fresh suet, which was sold in a lump. Yeah. And it was really sticky and Yeah. Uh, but, of course, you said you couldn't buy loads of it if there no. was loads one day because you didn't have a fridge. No. no. And you were saying how you could have jellies in the winter because you could set yes. them outside or on the windowsill, you yes. said. But you couldn't set them in the summer. No. So you didn't have jell as much in the summer. No. And so the rationing we looked at, uh, the rationing went on for 14 years, Mum. And um, it didn't end till 1954. Oh, no. Yeah, so I was, uh, I, I was five, five then, then in 1954. Yes. Yes. And so, but then you can't compare now, we were talking about, with them, because if we were rationed now for 14 years, it would be like jumping off a cliff. Yes. But for you, the food hadn't been like that no. for so long when no. you were growing up. No. So you don't really no. remember ever going hungry no. or... Never, never. They're not being tasty no. things to eat. And but I then you didn't have... eat like we did no. now, you no. know. I only remember having an egg perhaps for Sunday breakfast, a boiled egg. Right. And when the eggs were rationed, mate, that might, might not even have been every week. It was whenever, yeah. you know, mum could get eggs. So there you were. I mean, in our viewpoint, I mean, oh, get to you. If somebody said you can only have one egg a week for yes. 14 years, you'd collapse. Yes. But you'd got used to it. That's yes. what you grew up with. Yes. And exactly. then was it when I worked in the sweet shop, yeah. the windows were often empty. We just dressed the windows with bowls of this and bowls of that with ribbons on. But there was nothing there. <laughs> Make it look yes. nice, but it wasn't. And then ticket. if we did have a delivery of something, yeah. then, oh, yeah. It, people would almost cry when you ran out of it. Yeah. So that's all very interesting. So now, even though, well, uh, you've told me, and we're going to go talk about this next week, we're going to go on to Harlow next week. Yeah. And we're going, because it's interesting, though, you're still being rationed, even though you're in this lovely new flat. And um, because of that, well, you became vegans. Yes. And friends you met met, they were naturists yes. and opened a whole new world for you. Oh, so, yes. yeah. So, um, we'll talk about that next yes. time. Yes, our life was completely different then yeah. when we went to Harlow. Yeah. Apart from living in the lovely flat, our yeah. life completely changed as well. Yeah. All right, then we'll talk then next week. That's lovely. Okay, lovely. so we say cheerio. Yes. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs>
Shake.